to tie in with our uh, grand launch of our pause at the greenery, uh, we're talking today on pet, pet friendly um, plants in the garden. We often get uh, here at the greenery quite a few questions about what plants are safe to use in the garden for those of, for those of us who have uh, dogs and cats. Uh, and there are quite a range of plants that um, don't cause any problems at all to, to cats and dogs. There are a few which um, fairly common plants which some, uh, some animals, not all, some animals are affected by. So we just need to uh, uh, be conscious of those. And I'll give you a little bit of a rundown later on of what those plants might be that we need to be careful with. Uh, I've chosen today's selection of outdoor and indoor plants which are suitable for uh, uh, use around uh, dogs and cats uh, and I'll start with the indoor plant selection particularly for people that have uh, cats and uh, at this time of the year with the weather being cooler and cold um, uh, cats tend to be more inside and uh, more inclined to um, you go sniffing around plants, I guess, and uh, we need to be make, make sure that they're safe. So I've chosen um, a bit of a broad selection here of plants, which are all safe for animals. Uh, a very common indoor plant, uh, the parlor palm. A very tough indoor plant for things to grow. Could even be grown on a protected patio in Melbourne, as long as it's not exposed to really hot sun or really extreme cold temperatures. But very tough, smaller growing plant, good for say um, uh, uh, a, a short plant, you know, for a small area, a coffee table or a um, desk, for instance, or a countertop. Uh, very easy to grow, very, um, very hardy sort of plant, and uh, poses no problem to, uh, to cats or dogs. Believe it or not, orchids, all types of orchids, are safe for animals. Uh, I've chosen the um, Phalaenopsis type orchid, but things like Cymbidium orchids are also um, uh, pose no problems. Some of the flowering plants that cats can have issues with are Lilium. Now a lot of people plant Lilium bulbs or they have Lilium cut flowers, which they might buy at Florence. The um, pollen on the Lilium can be uh, toxic to cats. So, and it doesn't matter what type of lilium it is, they're all, um, they're all just as, as toxic. So it's one to keep in mind. Now, having said that, I have cats at home and um, we sometimes have lilium flowers in the house, uh, in a vase on the table, and the cat doesn't go near it. But it's worth knowing that there's a risk there. Other safe ones, uh, the peacock plant or calatheas, they're um, Nice decorative indoor plant, uh, grown for their speckled foliage, and um, again a very hardy indoor plant, tough indoor plant. And they pose no threat to to animals, um, and an easy, another easy plant to grow. If you want something trailing, either the uh, cissus, uh, that's a very tough indoor plant, tolerates low light also tolerates fairly dry conditions and uh, if you have a uh, position where you want something to cascade, for instance a high cabinet and you want foliage uh, or a hanging basket, then um, that's a, a very good plant, very tough plant for um, low light areas inside. As two is the Boston, Boston fern. These are making a comeback over recent years. They were very popular 20 or 30 years ago as hanging basket plants, either indoors or outdoors in a shaded area. Um, very decorative um, uh, foliage type plant. And uh, I guess with them being in a basket or elevated, then there's less risk of any uh, dog or cat uh, getting to the plant, but it, it, it's safe anyway. So if you have this planted, you know, in a pot as a decorative um, decorative plant, then it doesn't pose any risk. They're um, pretty forgiving as long as they don't dry out. Um, keep them away from any sort of central heating ducts in the house because that can dry them out 
fairly quickly and they don't like really dry air. Bathroom is a good spot for Boston Firms. Uh, outdoor plants, there's a whole range of different things that are suitable. Um, there are a few plants that um, can cause issues and believe it or not, um, a very common plant used in gardens is Rosalia's or rhododendrons. Uh, some dogs can be affected by um, uh, rhododendrons and azaleas. I think it's the sap of the plant which um, can cause irritation. There's a very old um, garden plant which uh, these days is considered a weed, uh, which is the wandering jew or trade scantia, and that um, uh, creates a lot of um, toxic problems, particularly with dogs walking on it. And licking their paws um, cause a lot of irritation. Dogs and cats generally both like um, scented foliage plants. Um, my dog at home particularly loves rosemary. I think it's the scent of the plant and I don't have a decent rosemary bush at home because every time he, he sees it, he jumps in it, he breaks it. <laughs> but the, the foliage is um, as we know very strongly scented and they're a very tough herb, uh, very good hedging plant for a hot, dry, um, sunny area and uh, tolerates a whole range of soil types including sandy soils. Uh, I'd probably just be conscious of heavy clay soils. If they get too wet because it's a drought tolerant plant then they tend to rot off. But um, dogs and cats love the scent and um, are attracted to, attracted to the scent itself. So, easy to grow plant uh, in a pot or in the garden as an edge, uh, very versatile sort of plant and be used for cooking obviously as well. Uh, pineapple sage, generally any of the sage plants are safe for pets. Um, this one again has a strong uh, scented foliage which uh, cats particularly tend to like and if they were to eat it, you know it's the same with the rosemary, if they were to eat it it's not going to affect them at all. Um, it's uh, and a pretty tough plant, you know, if you uh, plant it, it grows very quickly and needs to be pruned to maintain shape, has the decorative red flower and a strong scented foliage. It's a um, good plant for, say, a pot or a perennial garden. Um, there's a whole range of sage varieties available these days and a whole stack of different colours. So, that one's particularly good for um, scent and foliage and uh, for, uh, for the animals there's no problem. Alyssum, which is an annual plant, it flowers for a very long time and often left in the garden will self-seed and uh, you find you, once you've planted it, you'll always tend to have alyssum in the garden. Um, it does have a scent to the flower and cats particularly like the scent of a listen. Uh, you can get it in um, mixed colours. White was the original and probably still the most popular one. Makes a nice basket plant and a good border plant as a, an annual with other, say, uh, summer flowering annuals like petunias, for instance. Um, they grow quickly and they flower for a long time and an easy to care, easy to care plant. Uh, also um, safe for dogs and cats. Trees uh, in the garden, the traditional type trees pose no problem. Uh, any of the magnolias are fine, be it evergreen, this is magnolia little gem, or the deciduous magnolias, um, the foliage or the tree itself, um, or the flowers pose, pose no threat to um, dogs or cats. Uh, any types of camellias generally pose no problems either and uh, these are traditional favourites you know in the gardens. The sample camellias are uh, easy care plants with you know a reasonable amount of water through the summer. They flower for a long period through autumn and early winter and then uh, have the dark green glossy foliage for the rest of the year. Good hedging plants, good espalier plants, uh, can be standardised, uh, grow them well in a pot um, and uh, they look good in, in most gardens and most sort of situations.
There's a whole range of heuchera, these are called heuchera. Uh, varieties available now that have different coloured foliage. This one has the bronzy, purpley sort of coloured leaves. Some of them have really uh, bright orange or uh, tinged, even red sort of foliage as well. And they're great in sun or semi-shade. They're a good hardy plant for um, uh, borders and uh, they grow quickly and they look good all year round. Just a nice foliage plant, you know, to break up, say, uh, a lot of green in the garden. A whole range of succulents for those people that want plants that tolerate dry conditions. Um, any of the echeverias generally um, are good for animals. This one um, uh, does get a flower on it as well, and the flowers are not toxic. But um, they're tough plants for pots, for um, borders. Uh, plant them and forget about them, really. They don't need much water. So, uh, very easy plants to grow. They come in a whole range of different foliage types and foliage colours. Uh, they're good sort of um, contrasting plants, again, when you have a lot of green in the garden, or if you want something that you don't need water. Being a succulent, they're um, they're very drought tolerant. I've got a little bit of a list here of some plants that um, you just need to be cautious with. Um, this list here is particularly not good for cats. So if you have um, cats at home, uh, they are sometimes affected by these plants. Cyclamen, uh, you know, common at this time of year, they're used a lot. And I think it's the flower on the cyclamen that can affect, can affect the cat. Daffodil varieties, believe it or not, uh, not good for cats. And any of the chrysanthemum types, uh, you know, the Mother's Day quizzies, those sort of things, they can be, um, they can be a bit uh, toxic. I think with a lot of plants, the animal, if it was to eat them, then it has to eat a lot of it for it to be, uh, have any major problem. Uh, but it's good to know which ones might be, um, might be unsafe. And the one that I mentioned earlier with rosaleas and rhododendrons. What about fruit trees and stuff like that? Uh, fruit trees are all pretty safe as far as I know. Just yeah, I think grapes. Big part. Grapes? Uh, grapes, I think, can be toxic to dogs. I think the fruit itself uh, is toxic to dogs. It's a bit like uh, chocolate, I think, is another one that dogs don't, um, don't want to get near. But grapes and fruit, yes. Most other fruit trees as well as the way.